All right, so now that we've completed most of the basic functionality within our app, such as the ability to change the dice face images on pressing the roll button, or having new dice face images show up as soon as the app loads up, we want to explore another cool feature. We want to tap into the motion detectors in the iPhone to be able to detect when a user has shaken their phone and then changing the dice faces programmatically. Now, how do we do this? Well, let's see if we can figure it out. Whenever you're miffed about how to implement a certain functionality, the best thing to do is to go to help and review the documentation and API references. Now, you can either look at the Swift APIs or Objective-C or JavaScript, but the easiest thing is to actually use the search bar. So let's think about what we're trying to look for. We want to shake the phone and detect motion, right? So let's just search for shake motion. And what have we got? So under the Swift tab, we've got detecting shake motion events. That sounds pretty much like what we need. Let's see what it says. And if you read through some of this documentation, it tells you how the iPhone detects shake motion. And if you scroll down a bit, there's how to implement the motion handling methods. Now, while Apple is in the process of updating all their example code and projects from Objective-C, of which this is written in, what you're looking for are these hyperlinked method names, because that's what you're going to need when you implement it in Swift. So we can see that there's one which is motion began and motion ended. We don't really want the dice face to immediately change as soon as the user shakes it. We want it to change as soon as they finish shaking the phone. That seems to make more sense to me. Now, if we hit motion ended with event and just click on it, we get taken to the API reference. So it says that this method tells the receiver that a motion event has ended. And currently we've got the language selected as Swift, so we'll be able to see what that method looks like in its entirety. So let's go back into our Dicey project and try to implement this motion ended function. So again, remember that we don't want to create functions within other functions. So just double click here to check that closing bracket closes update dice images. So we'll write a new function just beneath it. So let's start typing the function name that we saw just now, which is called motion ended. So as soon as I've typed motion E, Xcode has already suggested to me the exact method that I want, which is the motion ended motion with event method. And I'm just going to hit enter to let Xcode type out the entire line for me. Now, Apple likes to have really long method names. So to save yourself time and to save your sanity, always hit enter or hit tab to let Xcode automatically write out the code for you. So another thing that you can see here is that Xcode has inserted this little placeholder here, which highlights in blue. And that's just to tell you where your code should go. So you can go ahead and select it and delete it. And in here, we're going to be putting in what we want to happen once the motion has ended. So what do we want to happen? Well, we want to change the dice faces. So I'm going to let you guys pause the video here and figure out how to update those dice images. Okay, so that was a pretty simple challenge. We did it twice in the previous lesson. And yes, you basically just have to call update dice images. Our beautiful function that we made in the last lesson that contains all the commands that's required to change the dice faces. So inside here, I'm going to give myself a bit more space and then I'm just going to type update dice images. There you go. And moment of truth, let's test out our app. Now, ideally, you should be running your app on your physical iPhone. So if you haven't figured out how to sideload your app onto your phone yet, this is a really good moment to take a step back and have a look at the module where we teach you about sideloading. It's a lot more fun when you have your own apps on your phone. Now, for those of you guys who don't have an iPhone, I'm going to show you how to test this on the simulator. So let's hit run.
And let's just check to make sure everything else is working as intended. So we've got random dice faces upon loading up of the app, and that's because of our call to update dice images within view did load. When I hit the roll button, I get new dice faces working as intended. And now if I want to test out the shake gesture in my simulator, of course, I can't shake my Mac. That would be crazy. So don't do this. <laughs> don't do this. Instead, you should go into hardware and shake gesture and it will simulate shaking the iPhone simulator. One thing to note for those of you guys who are testing out this app, you will have noticed that this app doesn't yet look very good when I, for example, turn it into landscape or when I run it on a screen size that's not the iPhone 6. And this is because we haven't set up any rules for how the user interface elements should be displayed. In a future module, we're going to dive deep into auto layout and learn about how to make our app look beautiful on every screen size and orientation. So don't worry about that. In this module, we introduced a lot of new programming concepts, and it's far more important to focus on those for now. And so there we go. We've created a Las Vegas dice shaker app that responds to both taps and shake. And in the process, we learned how to link up our design with our code. We learned about how to create IB outlets and IB actions. And then we learned about variables, constants, and data types. Um, we touched upon randomization and creating arrays. And finally, we reorganized our code, created functions, and tapped into the motion detectors. So this is our first step venturing towards app programming. And in the coming apps and the coming modules, we're going to be looking at how to call APIs from the web, how to set up our own cloud database, and much, much more. So I hope you guys had fun while learning Swift and making the Dicey app. In the next module on our online platform, we're going to get you to fly solo. You're going to be creating a magic eight ball app that gives you all of life's answers when you ask it questions. And the idea is to challenge you guys on what you've already learned, what you've already harnessed, and try to see if you've really understood it and if you can apply it yourself. So that's all from me for now. And I'll see you on the next module when we build a magic eight ball. See you there. When we build a magic eight ball app. So see you there.